Thank you for tuning in to Inside Rutgers. I'm your host, Anisha Krishna Kumar. And I'm Mariama Oluwahuje. Welcome to our second Technologies Without Borders themed episode of Inside Rutgers. Here we are at the Center for Global Advancement and International Awareness at the College Avenue campus, where the Technology Without Borders initiative got its start. And on this episode, we'll be giving you guys the latest on research and technology being conducted every day on our campus. In honor of our theme, Technology Without Borders, we have a segment that will explain what the initiative is all about. Let's take a look. Technologies Without Borders offers a variety of events and exhibits taking place throughout the entire semester. This year's theme, Technologies Across Borders, attracts students to the rapid increase of technological advancements across the globe. So the Technologies Without Borders, Technologies Across Borders theme is actually part of a wider program that our office does. What we have done for the past uh, five years since 2007 is had a theme focused on a global topic of concern. In the past we've done human rights, we've done globalization, we just finished um, ecologies, and this year and the year before we have focused on technologies without borders, technologies across borders. Um, so this specific year, we have a sub-theme that's on citizenship and social responsibility. So it basically talks about what issues within technology affect one's role as a socially responsible citizen. So we have lots of events, um, all different kinds of events from lectures to webinars to performances and film festivals that deal with this topic. The film festival um, really works as a way to engage students in the theme. Um, so the films that are shown as part of the film festival, they have some kind of technological aspect to them, whether it's how they're filmed or whether it's the topic that they discuss in the movie. Um, those are all pieces of the film festival. So in those movies, they're dealing with some kind of technology, whether it's, like I said, how they filmed it or what they're talking about, there is some kind of technological aspect to it. And it's a good way to get students to engage because the RUTV channel has these movies every month and it's a way for them to be a part of the theme in a new way that uses technology. You know, a lot of our events are just lectures of experts who know about technology or you know a film festival in an actual location and this is a film festival that people can see anywhere as long as they have RUTV and that's a way for us to use technology in our actual technology theme so it worked out well and um, was a good way for us to kind of bridge the gap between students and what we're doing in our office. Um, we have other exhibits going on they're part of the Fertile Crescent project that's um, done by the Institute for Women in Art and we also have, along with that, another exhibition that is part of a project that someone in um, Latino and Hispanic Caribbean studies is doing, and it's about uh, Guan it's called Curating Guantanamo. So there are exhibitions that we do have that are going on. For more information on Technologies Without Borders, visit globaldotruckersedu technologies. You know, I must say, it seems as though Technologies Without Borders is featuring a ton of great events all semester long. Speaking of groundbreaking events, the official kickoff rally for Building Our Future happened right here on College Ave. That's right. Now, for those of you who don't know, Building Our Future is a statewide coalition that supports the Building Our Future Act. Let's watch and find out more. Building Our Future is a statewide coalition that supports passage of the Building Our Future Act, a referendum on the ballot in November 2012 in New Jersey. Welcome to the official kickoff rally. Well, I think what's going on today is a bipartisan effort to make sure that we're putting the funding in place to allow our higher education institutions to train the students for tomorrow's economy and to generate the new ideas that drive the economy and to help take New Jersey to the next level. We're going to help you build that infrastructure so that we can get the brightest students, so we can create the best jobs. Voter approval of the bond issue will finance new buildings and facilities at all of New Jersey's colleges and universities. They will improve the quality of education that Rutgers students receive for years to come. Voter approval of this bond issue could also save Rutgers $100 million, possibly more. It will also help us build the facilities we need to maintain our position among America's finest universities. Investing now will help us out later down the line. You know, our tuition will go up. It's not taxpayers' money. So I think this is a really important issue that will 
help us in the long run that we need to pass now. We're one of the last states to do this. We haven't done it since 1988, and I feel like we're just very behind. When is the last time that you saw people from both sides of the aisle, people from business and universities, people from the administration and the faculty, and the students, all in the same place, singing from the same songbook? That just has to tell you how critical this issue is, how committed we are to having this done. Voter approval of this bond issue depends on you. On election day, take five seconds in the voting booth or on your vote by mail ballot and make history. Remember, vote yes on the Building Our Future Bond Act. There you have it. And remember, on election day, vote yes for the Building Our Future Bond Act. We'll be right back after this break. The School of Communication and Information, otherwise known as SKY, is dedicated to spreading the knowledge obtained through the scholastics of students and faculty members whose research goes by a philosophy that places people rather than technologies first. Sky has installed two-dimensional QR codes on a wall that each contain encoded information about different Sky research projects. Anybody with a smartphone is able to scan the code in order to decode the images and interact with Sky Scholarship through videos and other interactive tools. For more information on Sky Decoded, you can visit cominfo.ruckers.edu. Are you feeling overwhelmed, stressed out about school, or struggling with substance abuse? Then CAPS is here to help. CAPS is the newly formed Counseling, Alcohol, and Drug Assistant Program and Psychiatric Service offered here at Rutgers University. This health services program is designed to provide a positive and productive university experience. CAPS offers various counseling services, educational and preventative initiatives, training programs, and much more. If you are looking for a place that supports growth of your mind, body, and soul, then CAPS is for you. Before Hollywood was Hollywood, the movie capital of the world was right here in New Jersey. The Cornelius Lowe House Museum in Piscataway is now housing the exhibit for the very first silent films ever created. One of the first milestones in film history, The Great Train Robbery, is also on exhibit right here in this museum. The Cornelius Lowe House Museum is open Tuesday through Friday from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. The price of admission is free and open to the public. For more information about the Cornelius Lowe House Museum and the special events held there, call 732-745-4177. Rutgers University Swing Dancing Club is in full swing for the new semester. Rutgers University Swing Dancing Club focuses on a variety of styles of swing dancing which include Lindy Pop, West Coast Swing, Blues Dancing, and a few others. The Swing Dancing Club meets every Monday in the NJC Lounge at the Douglas Campus Center. They offer free dancing lessons from 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. But after the training is done, they have an all-out social dancing session from 9.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. For the more advanced swing dancers, the Swing Dancing Club has a swing dancing team that meets every Wednesday from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. in the Livingston Gym. If you have a thing for swing dancing and would like more information, just go to swingdance.rutgers.edu. Do you need a bike? For a month? For a semester? Did you know that Rutgers has a bike rental program? Sign up is easy. Just go to their website, bikes.ruckers.edu, and click on the Here button to register. You are going to need your net ID and password ready to sign up. Once you're done, you can come by and pick up your bike at several locations all around campus. With the cost of gas and the amount of traffic, why not rent a bike for $25 a semester or $10 a month? For more information, visit bikes.rutgers.edu. Thank you for staying with us on this Technologies Without Borders themed episode of Inside Rutgers at the GAIA Center on College Ave. On the Rutgers research side of things, did you know that they're designing a new cell phone app to reduce distracted driving? Well, that sounds like it could come in handy for us all. Let's watch and find out more. 
Last year, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration estimated that 3,000 fatal traffic accidents were the result of distracted driving. Engineers from Rutgers University and colleagues at Stevens Institute of Technology created a smartphone app that will help reduce distractions like incoming text messages or calls while the person is driving. Are you students voice their opinion on the app? Do you ever find yourself texting or making phone calls while driving? Personally, I'm a very cautious driver, so I don't find myself doing that too much. To be honest, yeah, um, especially when you know you're just so close to home and you know you feel like you're safe, you know the way. So I just you know sneak a quick look at my text and try to do the one-handed or one-finger text while looking at the road. What do you think about this app? Um, I guess it depends on the way that it works. Like if I actually think that it would help me, then I might it might be something I'm interested in. Honestly, I don't. I think the app is actually very helpful. I just don't think it's necessary. If people were to just turn off their phones as soon as they get in the car, then they wouldn't have to worry about picking anything up or answering any text messages. The app works by using the driver's cell phone to work with the car's sound system with Bluetooth capability to distinguish between the driver and passenger. It can slightly forward incoming calls and texts to message boxes for later use. It can also respond automatically to a caller or texter saying that the owner is currently driving and will reply later. So do you find this app useful? Um, I think so, for especially for people who are like distracted easily or they just have a habit of leaving their phone out, then I think this could really help them out in certain situations. Yeah, I think it's definitely useful. If uh, they can get enough people to use it, maybe it could make a little bit of a difference. What are some tactics you would want your cell phone to do to prevent you from using it while driving? That's a good question. I guess just um, there shouldn't be any option to get any text messages at all. So even like a vibrate or a buzz, you know, um, you just sh you shouldn't be able to get text messages until you're not driving anymore. Um, I don't really know because it's like I don't really if it's an emergency. If I know that I'm like on my way somewhere and I'm talking to someone, then I'm probably gonna do it anyway. Unfortunately, but if I could make it so that it's like voice activated, like all of it is voice activated, so all I have to do is talk, then that's something that I would definitely do. Looking into the future, the engineers hope their app will influence cell phone makers to pursue commercial development of this concept. How impressive. You know, I still don't have my license, but sometimes I fear for my life as I'm walking the streets as a pedestrian. This app could very well save our lives. The Rutgers community is always thinking of new things to improve our well-being. You're absolutely right. Also on the research side of things, Rutgers Today shares the latest on newest methods to diagnosing autism. Let's check it out. Hey, Becca. The current method for diagnosing autism is to uh, conduct these interviews. There are usually parental interviews or interviews with a high-functioning individual asking them very subjective questions. Right now it's, not, it's non scientific. It's an opinion and it's a score based system. Because of that, it's, it's very broad, so it includes a lot of uh, people under the same category. She has such a rare condition. There's only 700 people in the world that have this uh, Phelan McDermott syndrome. They're now calling it genetic based autism disorder. It's exciting that uh, they're doing this research. It's apparently very groundbreaking. What we were hooking up to Rebecca were these little electromagnetic sensors that we have here. 240 times a second, we get the position in space of each one of those sensors. In particular, what we're looking for in the GATE study is we're looking for how the rhythms of her, her walking improve. The beauty of this technique is that because we've looked at people who certainly have autism, and we've measured their movements and we've compared them to other people and we found um, systematic differences. We can then use that instead to diagnose autism and get a more precise diagnosis. Each child is unique uh, and requires a different, unique treatment tailored to that child. You know, I don't know that this is necessarily going to help Rebecca, but certainly. Uh, it's going to help other kids as it goes, things move forward and who knows, maybe in the next couple of years they'll come up with some dramatic uh, leaps and discoveries and things that could help her. There's a lot of controversy out there, but it's just a matter of agenda or egos or whatever. What is different about this is that what we're doing is based, uh, it's purely objective. It's what it is. That's, that's true data, that's true science. Autism is a serious problem that I hope we can tackle in the near future. I really hope so too. 
Rutgers Today also gives us the latest on another amazing project, building bridges with recycled plastic. Let's check it out. We turn recycled plastic into bridges. Can you believe it? A bottle of milk that you'd buy made out of plastic or a soda bottle. Polyethylene is a strong material. You can make composites with them to turn them stiffer. We could make almost anything really out of these materials. Taking something that's waste and making something great and new and productive out of it kind of blew my mind. The research work was done here because this is the most densely populated state in the country and it means we have the most garbage and everything else that comes with people. But it has certain advantages if you want to collect things and use them as new raw materials for new processes. On a first cost basis these bridges are already cheaper than the bridges that would be made out of say timber or concrete and steel. This is you know free enterprise at its best. To be able to do research is great be able to understand the world is great, but to be able to actually affect the world is even better. Ari is a really excellent example, really, of somebody that we uh, that heard us talk about what we were doing, uh, became interested, and so that's how we got started with him, and he's been working with us really ever since. I actually got involved through a program in my freshman year called Arresti. I didn't actually think I would like research coming in. I wasn't sure about it, but I figured I'm in college, may as well try. It's been such a tremendous, not only experience, but growth for me. I figured out you know, where I want to go, that I wanted to keep learning, wanted to keep being at the very edge of research and discovery. Rutgers has the opportunity. Um, if you seek it, you will find it here. I can barely conduct any arts and crafts projects out of plastic, let alone building an entire bridge out of it. <laughs> Anisha, you're so silly. All right, we'll be right back after this break. The average college diet can be overwhelming with lacking in nutrition. Luckily for Rutgers students, every Friday until November 16th, the Rutgers Gardens opens up its farmer's market to locals who want to enjoy it. You can take a bite out of Jersey Fresh Produce, baked goods, meat, cheese, wine, and so much more. The Farmer's Market is open on Fridays from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. and is located on 124 Riders Lane. The food is fresh and healthy, so what are you waiting for? Hey, what's up guys? We all know how great college life is. Classes only once or twice a week, so much extra time just to hang out with your friends and chill. But the one thing that everyone forgets is that with all this free time comes the responsibility to keep yourself in shape. Now I love video games, they're fun, but all that sitting around is just a one-way ticket to getting fat. So for that lifelike game day experience, just go outside and play it. There's over 20,000 students at Rutgers and I know at least one of them is bound to want to play a little pickup. Now when you're done, you're going to be hungry, I know it happens. Just try to limit your visit to the grease trucks every once in a while. You don't want to know the amount of calories that are in one of these guys. Stick to like a light sandwich, peanut butter and jelly perhaps, even some fruit. Now I know it's a little cliche, but one of these will keep the doctor away. Oh yeah, and soda. Try to stay away from that. Now I'm not, there's nothing wrong with the occasional indulgence, but you don't want to go overboard. <laughs> so for more information about just staying shape and eating right, go to food.ruckers.edu. I'll catch you later. Miss playing your instrument? Miss being a part of something great? Why not join the Rutgers Marching Band? For over 90 years, the RU Marching Band has been a symbol of tradition, excellence, and school pride. The band has an array of instruments and also plays many different types of music, ranging from traditional music to modern rock and pop. There is no need to audition. Students who have played in their high school band are welcome to join. For more information, please visit band.scarletknights.com. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency says that only 8% of plastic cups get put in the blue bin. That's not a win-win. Wherever you party, don't forget to recycle. This message has been brought to you by RUTV Weather Watcher.
Rutgers offers a lot of great classroom programs, but everyone needs to get away from the books once in a while. Rutgers Recreation provides a great way to find something outside the classroom. Recreational programs can be found in multiple locations on all campuses and are available year-round for students, faculty, staff, alumni, and spouses. Rutgers Recreation provides a great variety of programs, including aquatics, outdoor recreation, fitness, and many more. There are over 50 intramural activities offered by the program. Registration forms are available at all four Rutgers Recreation Centers. For more information, call the Sunny Werblin Recreation Center at 732-445-0462 or the College Ave Gymnasium at 732-932-8204. Also, check out their website at www.recreation.ruckers.edu. Thanks for staying with us, and if you're just tuning in, we're at the GAIA Center on the College Avenue campus for our Technology Without Borders episode of Inside Rutgers. The 2012 season will begin a new era for Rutgers football. The Scarlet Knights will introduce a new head coach, new uniforms, and a new stadium menu. This summer, Rutgers Athletics agreed to a 10-year contract with Sodexo Food Service, an attempt to provide game day fans with a more enjoyable experience. Sodexo will now become the main food provider for Rutgers Athletic Facility concessions. The provider of the food may have changed, but fans can still expect traditional game day meals and a menu composed of gourmet meals for fans choosing to enjoy the game in the Audi Club. Uh, we're very, very grateful and happy to be uh, a 10-year partner uh, between Sodexo and the Athletic Department. We look forward to being part of their family and doing everything we can do to enhance it to enhance the guest experience while they're here. Students will still be allowed to swipe for meals at every Rutgers athletic event, and for the first time, fans will be able to use their credit cards to purchase food. Reporting from Rutgers University, I'm Jermaine Kaur, RUTV. I'm sure Scarlet Knights linebacker Kasim Green can attest to that. He was awarded four Defensive Player of the Week awards. Let's watch and find out more about his most recent accomplishments. In 2011, Greg Schiano, the head football coach at the time, made a critical decision. Schiano decided to move then free safety Kasim Green to weak side linebacker. Green went on to make 127 tackles and record three sacks, winning the Big East Co-Defensive Player of the Year award. Coming into the 2012 season, Green was named a preseason All-American. Green hoped to help lead the Scarlet Knights to their first ever Big East championship, and so far the team is on the right track. The Knights have started the season 6-0, and it was in their game against Syracuse that Green made Rutgers history. The senior compiled 14 tackles, forcing three fumbles, and adding one and a half sacks in an interception against the Orange. Green was recognized with four Defensive Player of the Week awards, including the Chuck Benarik Award, the Nagurski National Player of the Week Award, the Big East Defensive Player of the Week Award, and the Walter Camp National Defensive Player of the Week Award. Green is only the third player in school history to be honored by the Walter Camp Football Foundation. Ray Rice and Ramel Meekins were the other two Knights to win the award. Uh, it feels good. I'm definitely uh, thankful and blessed to be honored um, in such a way. And, uh, you know, I just want to just, you know, give credit to my, my defense alignment and uh, my secondary who helped me get to this. Uh, I didn't do this by myself, um, but at the same time, just I'm very honored and thankful to have received that. I feel like, you know, I, I'm feeling good. I prepared myself uh, throughout the week to, you know, take, take on the opponent. And um, I always feel good and just know that I'm going to dominate. So that's just kind of me and who I am. We want to win the Big East. Um, we want to be undefeated. Um, and we want to hopefully play for a national championship, if not a high BCS Bowl. But we know that, you know, we can't get to none of that if we don't win this game Saturday. Thus far into the 2012 season, Green has totaled 63 tackles, three and a half sacks and two interceptions, but he still feels there is room for improvements. 
Uh, so far, uh, I'm doing all right. I can be a lot better. I'll be a lot better as, as the games go along, the season progresses. Congratulations to Kasim Green. We're very proud of all of our Scarlet Knights this season. Well said, Anisha. Now we'll be taking one final break. We'll be right back after this. There are more than 6 million car accidents each year in the United States. About 3,000 people die from choking each year. Most of them are children. More than 1 million people are injured each and every day. The Division of Administration and Public Safety here at Rutgers University provide classes to teach you how to handle these situations. The Division of Administration and Public Safety will be teaching classes about CPR, defensive driving, and first aid from now until the end of the year. For more information about these classes and how to sign up, visit rules.rutgers.edu. Have you ever lost your RUID like Michael Williams? Well, don't panic. Then take a second to retrace your steps and track down where you left it. You'll never know where you'll find it. Just suspend your card by going to ruexpress.ruckers.edu so that nobody else can use it. Once you've done that, you can reactivate your RUID. So remember to contact RU Connection ID Card Services. Learn more by visiting ruconnection.ruckers.edu. This is Mike. Mike is the president of the Stick Figure Advocate Club. He has his first meeting today. Unfortunately, he had some trouble getting the word out about his meeting, so no one showed up. He decided to call RUTV to get help promoting his club. Just one week after Mike called RUTV, they made a commercial for him. He is super excited. Today is Mike's second meeting. He is nervous that no one will show up again. Hey, it seems like calling RUTV really worked. Now Mike has new members. If you want help promoting your club or event, visit our website at rutv.ruckers.edu and just click the Promote Your Organization link. Visit our YouTube page at youtube.com slash RUTV or call us at 848-445-1966. Campus Information Services is comprised of many different departments that work together to keep the Rutgers community informed. The call center, also known as RU Info, is the main information and referral service of Rutgers University. The student colleagues here are a contact for students looking to attend Rutgers. They are also an info hub, answering any questions a student might have about the campus. RUTV is where the magic happens, producing shows like Wake Up Ruckers, Inside Ruckers, and Pass the Popcorn. RUTV creates promos and packages for organizations and events, covers live events, and also features at the podium and Weather Watcher segments. RUTV works hard to produce creative content that helps to keep the campus informed and connected. Be sure to check out the Facebook and Twitter pages of RU Info, RU TV, and Weather Watcher for information on events happening around campus. We've had a wonderful time hosting this Technologies Without Borders themed episode of Inside Rockers. Be sure to check out any events that the Technology Without Borders is hosting throughout the entire semester. I know I'll be. Now if you have any comments or suggestions for our next episode, please email us at rutv underscore inside Rutgers at email.ruckers.edu. And if you miss any parts of this episode or any previous episodes, please be sure to check out rutv.ruckers.edu. Alright, thank you for watching Inside Rutgers. We'll see you next time.